Hello Capricorn, welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul, thank you so much for letting me read for you. If Capricorn is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your tarot card reading. Remember to hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. If there is anything you would like me to pray over, or meditate upon, or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards. Use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Capricorn, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. Nine of Pentacles, look at that. Um, big time increase in things for you, okay? Predicting big uh, financial gains, um, big uh, gains in your health or in your progress or in something that, some path that you've been on. Um, you've been sort of walking very firmly on this path and it's paying off for you. Okay, you're somebody who is, um, this is, I mean, this is you climbing the mountain to success. Okay, you're that mountain goat, right? Um, you, uh, you're climbing the right mountain. That's the confirmation from spirit. You're doing the right thing. And you're going to start seeing the payoff. You're going to start seeing the rewards from the work that you're doing. Okay, and when I say work, I don't just mean your career, what you do for money. It's, it's whatever you're burning calories doing every day. Okay. This could be health, it could be wealth, fitness, finances, it could be something else. It could be you know, a charity or a uh, family thing or a spiritual or religious thing you're doing, whatever it is. It could be making progress at school, making progress in your personal studies or research or your personal growth and development. Right? Um, I find that you're a very generous person. I find that um, you don't really... I don't know, I feel like you're not really, you don't really give to people unless they ask you. But it's like a respect thing, you know? It's not like you're trying to avoid it. Um, I feel like it's a respect that you're not going to assume that anybody needs your help, but if they ask you, you're right there. Yeah. Let's put this card into some context, okay? Let's see what else is going on in your life right now. We got a two of pentacles. We've got more pentacles, the Prince of Pentacles, the Eon card, okay. Seven of Pentacles, that makes sense. Wow, this is, I mean, that's a lot of Earth energy. And of course, with the Seven of Pentacles, we get an Eight of Swords. So I feel that there is, um, there's a little bit of, maybe a need, maybe the Eight of, uh, maybe the Eight of Swords over here is sort of saying that you, you need some sort of confirmation that you're doing the right thing. Because that seven of pentacles up there, maybe we don't really see the success. Maybe it's saying that we don't quite see the progress that allegedly we're making, right? And so it could be that the results have been coming rather slow. Now, excuse me one second. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, I had to get, I use these pedals underneath the desk to change the cameras and one of the pedals wasn't working so I had to turn it back on. Uh, apparently my bathroom break was, was too long and it turned itself off. Anyway, um, with the Seven of Pentacles, it's not always perceptible, the progress that we're making. The idea here is we go to the gym every day, every day I'm looking in the mirror, I don't see a change, not a lick of difference, you know? Um, and so we start to wonder, am I, am I doing the right exercises? Am I, am I lifting the right amount of weight? Am I doing what is proper for my physiology? And, you know, why am I not making any, any um, progress? And then, of, sort, of course, with the Eight of Swords, we start ruminating. It loops back in on itself. It's a figure eight, right? The more we think about things <clears throat> in that way, the sort of the more stagnant we become, the more discouraged we become. I'm just, maybe I'm just, this is, I'm never gonna make any progress. Maybe I'm not doing the right stuff. Maybe I don't know what I'm doing. You know, 
I should just give up. There's no point. Why am I wasting so much energy? The time, the gym membership, the gas to get there. You know, the, the hour of my day that I spend there. I'm not seeing any difference. You know, I should probably just give up. Maybe I can do something else with that time. You know, and we start ruminating on this. And I think it just, it, it tangles us up even more. The eight of swords is like a big tangle of wires, right? Of thoughts that we get into. And sometimes it's hard to get out of those. Okay especially when it's gone on for too long. So let's, let's nip it in the bud as, quick as, as quickly as we can because Spirit's saying, hey, you're on, the right, you're on the right path. Maybe the two of pentacles right here in the middle is you considering changing your course. Well, we've got that nine of pentacles, I think, saying maybe we, maybe we don't want to change course yet. Maybe we don't need to. Let's keep going. Let's see what the path of the serpent has for us. Ten of swords, seven of swords, a lot of this tangled up air energy. Now, princess of pentacles and a four of pentacles. Okay. Well, this is nice. I think that we're starting with this earth energy. We're getting through a lot of this air energy and we're getting back to the earth energy. You see that? And so this is... Um, I think this is a big, it, this is a big confirmation from Spirit. I think Spirit is really saying, I kind of got chills from this because it feels like, um, it feels like you're, you're going to get a taste of the reward, you know? It feels like you're going to have a confirmation in your life that you are on the correct path. So we've got, um, we've got the eight. Your general energy becomes a 10, and then in the environment, we sort of get the 7, which we'll talk about those, what those mean uh, specifically. But it's a lot of air energy. It's a lot of doubt. It's a lot of second-guessing. It's a lot of questioning. Um, but it's not productive. That's the point. It's not a five, like a 5, even a 3. A 3 and a 5, I'd say, are pretty productive swords cards. But the 8, the 10, the 7, they're not productive. The more we have them, the more we focus on them, the sort of worse off we are. Okay? But the only other thing we have is the earth energy. So it's just like we have to, we have to recognize some of the fruits of our labor now. We have to see, honestly, that going to the gym every day and nothing has changed. You can't see any difference, any growth at all. How about the fact that you're not huffing and puffing going up the stairs? How about the fact that, you know, you're... You have more energy or you're sleeping better, right? And that, you know, your, your muscles are getting bigger. Just not those kinds of um, big night and day rewards that we are expecting sometimes, okay? And I don't know if I'm just saying about myself here with the gym stuff. But maybe you're talking financially or you're talking about at school or with your research or, you know, um, whatever it is that you're doing. Whatever you're putting your effort into, okay? I think that... We're sort of adjusting our expectations a little bit. Let's select the mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. This is a random card from the Smith Weight Tarot. This is the factor infinite and unknown. We're going to set it down right over here with our little octopus friend, the Eight of Tentacles right there on top. And we're not going to look at that card until the end of the reading, but it will tie everything together, give us the confirmation and conclusion that we need at the end. If you have a prediction for that card, put it in the comments down below. All right, let's do it together. Let's make it a group exercise of intuition. But now let's take a look around the room. Major Arcana, that's it. It's the only one we got. And it's significant because it is the past position. It is a doorway to the future. It is a huge decision that you made. Um, to do something I think absolutely new and different. You took a really, really big chance on something, okay? That you shut the door to a past situation and you decided to take on this new situation, whether we're talking a new job, a new relationship, a new, a new religion, a new spiritual practice, a new commitment. This is a very, very big deal. This is kind of saying, hey, I gave up a lot to be here. Okay, and I think you're maybe not seeing the rewards that you thought you would see. You, you made a really big move 
Like this was a really big decision to, to do this. And maybe you expected to see a little bit more progress a little bit more quickly. Um, maybe you expected the reception to be a little bit more pleasing. Um, you know, I, I think that there are a lot of things that didn't quite live up to your expectations, but Spirit's saying don't quit right now. Don't do anything, don't do anything drastic. It's kind of like we've just got to untangle ourselves from this air energy that we're, we're starting to ruminate and think too deeply about this in a way that's not productive. So um, let's not make any moves right now. Now's not the time for any big decisions or big changes. Okay? We've got our major arcana here. We don't have any fire energy. Spirit's way of saying, don't do anything impulsive. You don't have the clarity. You don't have the, um, you don't have the, the vision. You don't have the, the will right now to make any big changes. Um, there's no water energy. Sort of spirit saying, yeah, it's not as pleasant and you, as you thought it was going to be. It's not, it doesn't feel as good as we thought it would. Okay. And it's sort of beginning to discourage us. We do see our air energy here. But we also see a lot of earth energy, a lot of this very good earth energy. And the earth energy is the material results of what you're doing. So I see that there are a lot of results. There are, there are a lot of good things happening. Right? There are a lot of rewards for all of your efforts. But see, with this, with this Eon card, it's kind of like I walk through the doorway... And, you know, this is what you're confronted with. And it might, um, it might be an idea in, or an issue, really. Um, that we thought just making the decision and going through the door was enough. But now you get here and there's a lot of work to do, right? And so maybe that's a reason why we're not seeing any fire energy here. We need it. Maybe the mystery card, fire energy. Let's get to work, right? Maybe we just thought going to the gym, I walk through the door, I'm here. So where's my, you know, where's my perfect physique? Where's my health? Where's my wealth, you know? Um, you know, it's kind of like you, you start a new job and you walk in through the door, you sit down at your desk and say, okay, I'm here. Where's my paycheck? Where's the rewards? Where are my benefits, you know? Um, the fire energy is missing. It's kind of like we, we got to do the work to get the result, to get the rewards. You know, um, I don't think spirit's saying that you that you haven't been working hard. I think what's going on here is that with this air energy, with this rumination, it sort of stopped the progress. It's kind of like um, it's kind of like you're, you went on strike a little bit inside. You know, you said, "Wait a minute." I'm going to stop go I'm not I'm I'm not going to go to the gym today until I figure out what's going on here. I I got to sit down and think about this. You know, so it's like we've stopped production. We've stopped putting in the work right now because we need to figure something out. But I think that our um our thoughts right now are a little bit too jumbled, a little bit too tangled up here to really make heads or tails no pun intended, um, of the situation. So spirit saying, don't, don't make any changes. Keep doing what you're doing right now, right? The two of, of pentacles is this idea of, you know, if you change something, maybe we can, it, it would make a change for the better, right? That maybe, you know, maybe you are doing something wrong. And if you, and, and if you, uh, if you modify your behavior, we'll see different results. Um, I think these two cards together, the Nine of Pentacles and the Two of Pentacles, in this case, I feel like um, a change right now is going to change the Nine of Pentacles, that we actually would run into a Seven of Pentacles if we changed anything now. Spirit saying, stay the course. Spirit saying, do not let your mind interfere with this persistent energy that you have. You are headed toward this wonderful success. The financial situation is going to improve. 
You will see the gains as a result of all your effort. You have to continue the effort. Don't make any big changes right now. Stay persistent. We have the Prince of Pentacles down here at the bottom. This is a very persistent energy. This is the builder. And right now you're being told to keep building. This is the energy that you need. This is the, um, this is the, the, the sort of attitude that we need. I'm just here. I'm going to consistently do this work. I'm going to keep putting in my effort every day. Nose to the grindstone. Keep going. Maybe this is too this is too new still, right? If we went through this doorway, when was this decision? Okay, relatively speaking, I don't think it was that long ago because it's sort of still here, right? I mean, this, it's, still, it's still on the spread. It's still on the table, even though it's in the past position. I think it's recent enough that it, it's, it's too soon to start modifying things. We don't know if it's gonna work yet perhaps, right? So we're being told to continue. We're being told to stay consistent, right? Constancy bears fruit here. Even though what we're looking at is seven of pentacles. To me, feels like you got here and it was like, wow, I didn't know this was a fixer upper. Um, that we, you know, you, maybe you bought a house or you started working for this company and you realize that it's, you thought this was going to be a palace or a paradise, but it's not. Okay. And um, maybe part of the interpretation of that two of pentacles is that it's through your efforts that you can turn this fixer upper into a paradise or a palace. And maybe that's what you're called on to do. Maybe you weren't walking into something that was already perfect. Okay walking into something that needs your help, that needs your work. The seven of, of pentacles is, it's a card called failure, but it depends on our perspective. We could look at this as, yeah, this was something that tried to grow and it didn't and it's garbage. Or we could say, hey, you know, this is something that still has a lot of potential, you know? Uh, maybe this can be upcycled, right? Maybe this can be renovated, restored. Maybe this can be a very profitable thing. Maybe this business can be saved. I don't know if you're if you started working for somebody or you're some sort of a consultant um, or that somebody sort of, you know, begged you to come to to come be part of their team. And you get there and you realize that they don't know what they're doing and everything's sort of in everything's just sort of crumbling down. And your instinct, I think, is to sort of abandon ship to say, whoa, I don't I didn't mean to get into this sort of thing. Okay, but the seven of pentacles is is discipline. It is commitment. It's saying that my hard work and my commitment, my effort, my constancy can change this situation into something change, right? Two of pentacles is change. Change this into something profitable. But we start with that rumination. We start that old, those old swords coming out again, the old mind, right? Kind of saying, I this I I was thing I was expecting something else. I was told it was something else. We're trying to find a lot of reasons to leave. You know, that we're are, we're sort of it's a confirmation bias. We say I'm I don't want to be here, and because I don't want to be here, they shouldn't have promised me it was going to be something else, or or um, they led me to believe this was going to be better, and now it's not better, and I should go. Uh, I can't afford to stay here and and try to fix this thing, or. Um, or even, you know, worse, where we start to think, I'm not capable of fixing this. I'm not capable of turning that seven of pentacles into a nine of pentacles, right? I'm not capable of turning what is um, kind of a shabby thing into, you know, a treasure. Yeah. And so we start doubting. This is, and then we get to the ten and the seven, and it's just more doubt and more confusion. I don't know what to do. Maybe this was um, a big commitment. Maybe you've already moved to this new place or something. And it's just, I've already made this big commitment, this big decision. I can't really, you can't go back. That's the thing that I know here with the, the Eon card. You can't go back. This is a doorway through which we cannot return. Okay, this, is an, this was an entrance only. And there's no, now the door's closed. So really the question is, what do we do going to the future? 
how do we navigate this situation? Well, that that eight of that eight of swords is um, it's a problem that needs to be solved. But by ruminating on it, we're not sort we're not really looking for solutions. That's what rumination is. It's just that it just keep looping back in on itself, making things worse. Um, we're not getting any sort of clearer in our understanding. We're getting more confused, more tangled up. So it's a problem that needs to be solved, but we're we're not thinking in that way. We're just sort of thinking of all the things that are wrong with it and convincing ourselves that it's it's bad. And we're just feeling worse and worse and worse about it um, until we get to the path of the serpent. And as we talk about these cards, I would like to ask for your subscription. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It's totally free, doesn't cost anything, supports the channel. I have another channel, Dove and Serpent Bedtime Stories. Go check out that channel as well. Um, Ten of Swords, we're getting really close to throwing in the towel. Your solution, if there is a solution with the Eight of Swords, it's to just give up. That's easy. Drop out, right? Stop doing it. Um, completely leave. I think this is going to make things worse for you because, again, it's a doorway that you can't go back through, right? So I don't know if if running away is going to be the best choice for you. Making any kind of drastic change right now, I think, is going to um, it's going to ruin any chance that this can be successful. Because again, I think it's so new that we don't really know for sure. We can't say for certain one way or the other if this is going to be okay. It looks like it is to me from here. You know, when we're looking at the at that nine of pentacles, that is the energy we want. That is what we are sort of aspiring to. It may look like a seven right now. But with a couple of tweaks, you know, if we change our perspective, if we look at this a little bit differently, it can be a nine of pentacles. This can be something that really does. I mean, it, it could real. This could really pay the bills. Okay. Um, but the ten, as your general energy, I think is um, <clears throat> when we're in that eight of swords. We're in that rumination, that overthinking, that over analysis. That's not really leading to any sort of productive insights. The one escape hatch we have is to just run away. And that's kind of what this is, sort of that escape hatch. Okay. But moving forward into a seven of swords. Seven of swords, seven of pentacles. Now we're starting to look at this and see how we might be able to think about it differently to really get some kind of progress. Right. Now we're now we're really being we're being proactive. We're thinking we're solutions oriented here. We weren't over here. But now with the seven and the seven, we're sort of, we're solutions oriented, right? And even with the seven of swords, there's a lot of other options. There's a lot of ideas on the table here. So this is really like a brainstorm. To me, this feels like, let's, um, let's just spitball. It's like, I want everybody in the room to come up with a plan by lunchtime. I don't care how crazy the plan is. Let's all come up with a plan by lunchtime, right? And then we'll get back together and we'll, we'll sort of, um, we'll have a brainstorm sesh, you know? Um, and so we sort of, we're, we're thinking through different options, different solutions. And we're going to find one that works. Okay. And the one that works is maybe the needle in the haystack, but it's that central sword, that ace of swords right there in the middle. Maybe the mystery card will be an ace of swords. Maybe it'll be an ace of wands. I'm hoping it's an ace anyway. Um, but this is, uh, it's also a very important card because sometimes it represents criticism coming from other people. This is the card of your environment. So this is like, this is saying, don't surround yourself with people that are going to discourage you. Don't surround yourself with the naysayers, the critics, the people that are pessimistic about it, the people that are telling you you can't do it, you know. Um, surround yourself with people that are thinking proactively, that are solutions oriented, okay? Because this card is in your environment and it's important that you, you have the right sort of people around you, okay? Now, the obstacle, of course, is the princess of pentacles. The obstacle is something that is barren and lifeless 
wanting to become, needing to become, has the potential to become the most beautiful thing. The Princess of Pentacles is like nature in the dead of winter. Okay, and just to, I know this is sort of, you know, too generalized, but there's no life there. It's cold, it's sterile, it's barren. There's no plants, there's no animals. It's just, it's nothing, right? What we want is to know, to realize that this nature, this dead of winter has life hidden inside of it. And that any minute now, all that life is going to return. That verdant energy is going to come back. The animals are going to come back. The trees are going to grow. The flowers are going to bloom. The sun will be out. It'll be warm. It'll be full of life, teeming with life and beauty and, and abundance, right? It's turning into an empress card. Uh, the princess of pentacles, we know that's the struggle right now. This is your difficult position. It's difficult for you to sort of keep in mind or to operate on the basis of this situation may seem dead and lifeless now, but it can become the best thing ever. This can become the treasure. This can become the abundant paradise, the empress energy, right? It's us really in, in a more th kind of fundamental way, realizing that this seven of pentacles can become, it can change into a nine of pentacles. The princess of pentacles will become the empress. Okay. And that's the, um, that's the obstacle for you right now. Okay. Operating on that basis, this, on this knowledge or this assumption, this, well, I think certainty, right, is going to give you the security that you need of the four of pentacles. The Four of Pentacles is a card that says, I'm not going anywhere. Okay. The Four of Pentacles is sort of building something up from its foundation, really thinking of the roots of something. Okay. It's safety, security, stability. It's health and wealth, you know, fitness and finances. So it's focusing on those fundamental skills or those fundamental concerns um, that are going to sort of stabilize things. First thing we got to do is make sure that the floor, the ground floor is stable, right? So it's, um, you know, take care of those more immediate or urgent concerns first. Okay. If it's a business or something, okay, well, the first thing we got to do is we got to start, stop hemorrhaging money, right? That's the first thing. You know, let's uh, first thing we got to do is just gather all our resources up, see what we've got, you know, and let's take care of those fundamental things that we can do first. Or this is our personal life. If it's a relationship, what are the foundations of a relationship? You know, love, trust, um, you know, th this sort of stuff. Um, so we do the basics first, right? If this, you know, what is the, the, the foundation of our spiritual practice? You know, what's the foundation of your, of your meditation practice? Well, it's being able to sit still and maybe working on your breath a little bit, you know. Um, it's just that let's get back to basics. Yeah. But this is the car that says, not going anywhere. Okay. But I want to look at that mystery card because anytime we get a four, we start looking for a five. And I feel that there is... Um, there's activity coming. There's an odd numbered card here somewhere, or there is a fire card here somewhere. Um, and I think you've been wondering, I think that's part of our, our air energy, wondering if you've made the right decision. And when we do that, um, we get into that eight of swords. We get into that rumination. This is a question that we occupy our mind with that is kind of a waste of time. You know, because the point is you've made the decision. You have to deal with what's in the present. You have to deal with perhaps what things we can do now. Now, this, again, I, I know I said that this was not you making any big changes. No, but what about small changes? You know, what things can we do? Should we do now for solutions oriented? What things can we do to help bring about that Empress energy? I want the mystery card to be the Empress or to be some fire energy, or to be an odd-numbered card, or an ace of something. 
I know that's a lot of choices, right? One of them's got to be right. Come on. Um, if you have a prediction, put it in the comments down below. Let's see what we have. The world. The entire world. Well, um, it's card number 21, so it's an odd number. We did good. We did good. Um, but it's also this idea of... Um, everything is possible that this this really can um this really can become something huge now we're talking about the princess of pentacles becoming the empress um but how about becoming the entire world right and so maybe this is um we're talking or we're sort of we're thinking small scale here maybe the world card is asking us to expand our horizons, expand our vision of what's possible. We're thinking too small. We're thinking too locally. We got to start, we got to think globally, you know, cosmically. Um, I think this is also talking about the delay. Okay. I think things are taking longer than you thought they would. That's okay. All right. That's okay. Uh, but the idea here is that you, you know the potential of the situation you know that the princess of pentacles will become the empress. Okay. I feel like you were in the right place. I feel like focusing on this foundation is going to allow you to sort of expand and to realize the infinite potential here. But if you're going to travel to outer space, right, you've got to have a good launch pad. You've got to have a, a secure vessel. So we need to think of the basic things first. Right back to basics. If we're going to realize the the infinite, the complex, you know, um, and in some ways, I think with this card, we have to look at our deeper concerns, our deeper fears. You know, um, is there a feeling of of loneliness out here for you? Right, I, I'm I'm getting this sort of feeling that you've you've entered into this place. And it sort of, it looks cold and dark, right? Rather than teeming of light, it looks barren and sterile. It looks vast and cold and empty and lonely, right? Um, you know, in other words, it, you kind of feel abandoned. You kind of feel that you've been like left alone, okay? And I think that's another good reason to surround yourself with people that are solutions oriented. People that, you know, you can bind together with them and figure out what little things to do. Again, sort of get back to basics, get things stabilized, and then start building up, 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 right? But um, it, it does have this sort of feeling of isolation right now. Okay, let's do one thing before we move to the extended reading. I want to do an empowerment oracle card. Here we go. We've got the adventure of life. I embrace the adventure of my life. Today I am courageous enough to try something difficult to achieve my goals. The adventure of life. Well, this is, I think, a very good card for this reading. Um, embracing the adventure of this. And yeah, this is somebody who's sort of on this path by themselves. You know, I think you will meet a lot of very valuable people along the way. A lot of very wonderful things. I think, I think the full commitment, I think we get out of this air energy and we just fully commit and we just say, all right, you know what? I'm here. It may not be what I thought it was going to be, but I'm here. I'm all in. Let's do it. I think spirit's going to put the right people, places, and things in your path. That's part of the world card too. Because we realize that the world may seem, it may feel like a cold, vast, empty place, but it's teeming with life. And I think once we sort of start moving around and exploring and, and moving forward and, you know, and acting, interacting with the world, spirit puts the right people, places, and things on our path, the right resources, the right connections. Okay. We're going to do an extended reading. If you want to stick around, there's a link up top. There's a link down below. New readings for Capricorn Thursdays and Sundays. Be sure to watch both readings. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do. 
It is totally free, doesn't cost anything. Um, also subscribe to the Dove and Serpent Bedtime Stories. If you want to, leave a comment and let me know where in the world you're watching from. I want you to know that you're the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you and I love you. And we're all in this together.